Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, likes, comments, and subscriptions are appreciated as these do help with my YouTube rankings. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. I also just woke up, you guys know the deal, if the video seems a bit weird, it's because my brain not there, so yeah. At the moment, it says Bitcoin price analysis. <clears throat> Bitcoin faces major hurdle near 47,000 US dollars. This one also says why Ethereum's bulls aim a fresh rally above $4,000. I think in general, a lot of people who are holding these coins or anyone who may be considered a bull and or a whale are probably trying to raise the prices of the coins in some sort of way. Bitcoin's price is just about relatively unchanged from where we were yesterday. Like nothing has really taken place. A lot of altcoins, when you look at the prices, at least at the time of me making this video, are trying to move up. Ethereum, I believe, is currently up by 1% or 2%. There are many other coins that are also up by 4%, 7%, 12%. You kind of know the deal. I personally think a large portion of the market is probably rather fatigued with how slow that Bitcoin is moving. We saw this at some point during 2021 as well. And I think the best part about that year was that we kept on getting news that Bitcoin's price was going to rise. Many of the other altcoins began to completely start surging. Bitcoin tried to do that thing once again where like it starts going down and everything else is supposed to go down. Everything else didn't go down. Bitcoin started going up. All the focus then shifted to Bitcoin is actually going up. And that's just kind of how that year went until we got to the point where for like a three or four month period, it just simply wasn't moving. So yeah, Ethereum was, all. I mean, you'll see as we go further into the video, Ethereum price news was also uh, quite uplifting and or popular today. And it seems a bit obvious as to why this would be happening. This one says, Binance coin price prediction. Binance coin could make a 26% upswing to $648. Yeah, and Bitcoin could go to a million dollars tomorrow. It doesn't mean that it's actually going to happen. Uh, the news being is that there's been a significant amount of movement on the, the Binance coin chain. It says it was $2 billion in daily trading volume just for Binance Coin, which is incredibly significant as the year has only just begun. However, once again, uh, it's really about my opinion, the really strong Bitcoin movements or, or altcoins really moving in sync. Uh, the One of the, the great things about the market that at least we have right now is that while all coins are tied to Bitcoin in that if Bitcoin goes down, they usually also all go down. They're also all tied to Ethereum. So if Bitcoin's having a bad month time uh, and Ethereum starts doing really well, the rest of the market usually ends up picking up as I don't know if, he, if, if Binance coin is, is set for a 26% swing in the very near future. I'm pretty sure many other coins would also react quite positively to that move, but I don't think that's going to be happening in the very near future. Also, in sure, why not? Not sure where they're getting this news from. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Ripple versus SEC XRP prime price prime to surge 98% in quarter one. Will ODL recover the lawsuit's erosion? So once again, not sure where this news is actually coming from. This says Ripple versus SEC lawsuit to end in April. There's a question mark there. What this means to XRP holders, and if you scroll down right around here, apparently, don't know this guy, sure, why not? His name is Jeremy Hogan. It says a well-known XRP lawyer has given an estimate on when the long-running SEC versus Ripple legal dispute will be resolved. When asked for his honest assessment on when the case would be over, Hogan said that even in the worst-case scenario, the chances of it being extended past summer are slim. He said, I have been involved in a thousand lawsuits in various U.S. courts and various areas of law. The court system is frustrating and lengthy. But what I know is it usually gets it right. Don't give it to the cynicism. Uh, it will get it right again. I assume he can't spit on the institution that uh, holds his 
paperwork. So anyway, the point is, uh, this man mentioned nowhere April. I'm not sure where this April time frame came from. However, on the interwebs, a lot of people are discussing or are optimistic at this moment that the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit will be over before summertime. The idea being is that Brad Garlinghouse, it even says it's somewhere around here, uh, had mentioned also the 2022 time frame speculating that behind the scenes someone told him that the lawsuit won't go on forever there has to be an end point where there's a decision that is being given i would love if this was over today so we could simply stop talking about it um i feel now now listen one of two things are going one of three things are going to happen but it's basically one of two either they 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 rule that xrp is a security the price drops by 25%, people stop caring five days later, and the price starts going back up. Or they announce that it's not a security after all these years, because sure, why not? Um, and the price just continues to start skyrocketing. Uh, there's no real other thing to kind of talk about it. If, if after the lawsuit is over, if the price doesn't at least triple, you know, then it's kind of all been for nothing. But yeah, this was also popular news i don't know what to even call this there is a lot of there's, there's constantly a lot of ripple slash xrp news things floating around and it doesn't i don't know what to even how to end this portion uh so yeah apparently soon saith the website and on top of that it says Bitcoin markets have been consolidating since the beginning of the year, uh, a little bit longer, but on-chain metrics are painting a more positive picture as more of the asset is becoming illiquid. On-chain analytics provider Glassnode has been delving into Bitcoin supply metrics for years to get a better view of the longer-term macro trends in his weekly report on the 3rd of January. The findings revealed... That although the asset has been trading sideways and down, so far, more Bitcoin has become illiquid. There has been an acceleration in illiquid supply growth, which now comprises more than 76% of all the Bitcoin out there is not moving. Glassnode defines illiquidity as when Bitcoin is moved to a wallet with no history of spending. Liquid Bitcoin supply, which makes up 24%, logically that, that's how... Is it? Yes, math works, yeah. Is in wallets that spend or trade regularly, such as exchanges and hot wallets. We are currently at the point where nearly, I mean, 76% of all Bitcoin is just not moving. Bitcoin's price refuses to move. I do not understand why. It would be nice to know. However, yeah, this is only going to continue picking up. We continuously have news all the time about companies and institutions and banks and very rich people who are buying up tons of Bitcoin. And once again, these are the people who are openly admitting that they're buying large amounts of Bitcoin. Anyway, yeah, this is also making the rounds as whenever Glassnode or... What's the other one? Any, any, I don't know. The other company. Anti... No, it's not anti anything. Glassnode... Mobilitics? Analytics? Mob, mob, anyway, the other company who keeps looking through all the blockchain data, they keep coming up with the same exact assessment over and over. Um, if there is, at any point, going to be a very strong Bitcoin price movement, I mean, it has to be something major. Because we have gotten nothing but continual accumulation news slash uh, there's no Bitcoin actually really moving around anymore. Like, if the only Bitcoin that's moving around is stuff on cryptocurrency exchanges... Anyway, that's just about all the price news. Uh, not a whole lot of, but a lot of it did uh, repeat itself. Bitcoin's still not moving. Ethereum desperately wants to go above 4,000. Binance Coin is apparently about to do something. And XRP is waiting until April, June, before it can actually have a leg up. Yeah. And without further ado, let's move on. In number one of one of the most popular news stories of the day, when asked to evaluate Ethereum's development progress, Vitalik Buterin stated that we are 50% of the way there with the London hard fork now activated. The next milestone for Ethereum will be the merge. 
There's a lot of rhyming words coming out, wait for it, which will ultimately switch off proof of work mining and transition to proof of stake. In the most recent episode of the Bankless podcast, Buterus stated that the merge is set to take place in the first half of 2022. I think a lot of the excitement and a lot of the uh, articles that I saw floating around had to do w w whenever anyone gives like an actual date near something, it provides a lot of optimism for what could basically happen. The next step called the surge, so we have the merge and now the surge, will increase Ethereum scalability through ZK rollups. According to Buterin, Ethereum's development will be 80% complete once this step is taken. The remaining 20% of the roadmap will take place over the next six years. You heard that correctly. This will enable more users to run validator nodes called The Verge, eliminate historical data overhead called The Purge, and finally add incremental improvements to the Ethereum protocol called The Splurge. I know they sat in a room and just laughed as they made up these words. I mean, it, it must have, <laughs> there could have been no other way. So anyway, yeah, as it stands right now, we have gotten word from Vitalik that it should be happening sometime this year in the first half of this year, which I assume if we get any inkling of a month, because usually we get stuff like, hey, this will happen around this block was when the upgrade will actually take place. We will see very strong price movements as people have been waiting. It's been like seven years for this right now. I, I do uh, chuckle a tiny bit over the idea of the next six years, which means we're not getting Ethereum 3.0 anytime. I mean, it's going to take, you know, decades at this point. Um, yes, very popular news. We are 50% of the way there. Uh, the news that we got before from some of the other developers was that uh, January would be the time frame. No. Give me that grain of salt back like right now. Don't even hold your breath on that. I would assume May. Like if, if, if they're giving themselves until like June, expect like the very last day of being the actual upgrade. Uh, there was also a bit of optimism. Wait, oh, wait, wait. Yeah, here we go. Vitalik Peter in clear speculation around the postponement of ETH2 upgrade. Apparently on, what is it called? WeChat? WeChat. Uh, in China, people apparently were talking smack. I don't know what they were doing uh, through a, a a chat forum thing where someone announced that apparently Vitalik Buterin had announced this didn't happen, had announced that it was going to take another year or two to actually have the upgrade. And then he responded on the direct chat saying, I didn't say that. And everyone completely lost their minds. And now we know that he didn't said that and that it, apparently it's still going to happen sometime this year. So I get, you know, optimism and all that stuff. Who lied to, to, to say that he said that stuff? I don't know. What a weird market to be in. I'll say it forever that this market's incredibly odd. Anyway, that's the apparently in the next 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24 months, we're going to have Ethereum 2.0. And he, he didn't said that news. Oh, also, if you want to, I, I listen. We can also tie this one directly into it, as 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 well. Uh, Coinbase Chief Product Officer Sir Surojit Chatterjee is the latest to publish his predictions for the crypto industry in 2022, and he foresees major advances in the scaling of Ethereum. What? That's crazy. It's almost like they talked to the de developers about that. I don't know. Industry leaders, analysts, and investors have been sharing their 2022 predictions for the crypto ecosystem. And Coinbase's Chatterjee is confident that Ethereum will be at the forefront of Web3 and the crypto economy as it scales. The CPO shared his predictions in a company blog post on Tuesday in which he stated that Ethereum scalability will improve, but alternative layer one networks will also see traction. He said, I am optimistic about improvements in Ethereum scalability with the emergence of ETH2 and many layer two rollups. Kind of weird about the timing of him announcing all this stuff as, as if Vitalik didn't just also say all these things. So, as it stands right now, it appeareth that sometime soon we will be getting Ethereum 2.0. The merge will happen. Ethereum will have proof of stake. We will have over, hopefully, a thousand transactions per second, then goes to 10,000 transactions per second, to a million transactions per second. Ethereum becomes the number one coin in the world because people won't stop talking about the flipping, and then everyone goes to bed with their glass of milk and their cookie because that just seems to be the end game for all of this. Yeah, that's all the Ethereum news. 
Is it? Yes, that's all the Ethereum news. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We're, we're, we're still getting... I'm not showing them in, the, in this video anymore until we get closer to it. Uh, we're still getting all those ten to $12,000 price predictions uh, per Ether. I don't know, man. You know, you got to upgrade before you can actually get to those prices. And without further ado, let's move on. For some reason, this was in the news, and I'm not exactly sure why. It says U.S. mining company Marathon now holds 8,133 Bitcoin, and they're not selling it. Fantastic. Apparently, there was a report in December that said that the company named Marathon announced how many Bitcoin they had. I feel like we already spoke about that, but for some reason, uh, this was quite popular news today. Uh, and apparently, they assured people that they're not selling any of the money that they own. Ah, uh, yeah, we, we spoke about that when they were buying tons of mining equipment. And people were like, what? That's like a billion dollars in mining equipment. How the heck can they do that? Oh, they have money. Um, and then apparently, other people have been tweeting about it. Um, and it says, but they're still holding all their Bitcoin. Did you get it? Anyway, um... Cool. What? That's no no way they're doing that. I, I can't believe it. Apparently, people were looking through all their stuff, and the, the last time they sold Bitcoin, uh, I believe, was in 2020 or something like that. And since then, they've decided not to sell anymore. But I guess the reaffirmation of them announcing that they're never going to be selling their Bitcoin again really did it for people. So for some reason, this was in the news. I'm not really sure why. I'm um, bringing it to you just in case we did not talk about it and you are maybe writing it down somewhere as to how much Bitcoin uh, every company holds. 8,133 Bitcoin is a huge amount of Bitcoin. But I feel like we spoke about this and them not selling their Bitcoin is not really news per se because all the mega companies are buying up tons of Bitcoin and not selling it because that that's just how you become a trillionaire in the future. Anyway... That's the marathon news, and they have a photo of people like actually running a marathon because you know the words are the same. And let's move on. Also in the news, Grayscale has added, I think it's Amplify. I have no idea what this coin is called, um, and have removed two coins from their fund. The world's leading digital asset manager, Grayscale Investments, has readjusted its DeFi fund. The firm has rebalanced the financial products weightings with AMP, the native token of the Flex payment. Okay, amazing. Sure, why not? They've added AMP, uh, and they've taken out Bancor and the Universal Market Access Protocol, or UMA. UMA. According to a recent series of tweets posted by the company, this will be the first time that AMP, a token employed to collateralize payments on the Flex network, Oh, gosh, has been included in Grayscale's investment portfolio. Uh, Grayscale often removes coins from their funds. Uh, I just don't talk about it. For those of you who don't know, Grayscale is the largest holder of, of Bitcoin funds, whatever, in, in the entire world. And last year, due to the excitement of the cryptocurrency space, they begin to add a whole bunch of other no coins, almost said noise, kind of, to their... um. To their offerings, uh, they added Ethereum, they added, I mean, every major coin was added to their thing, and then eventually they were adding like five or six different DeFi coins every two or three weeks. I think they did it because of the hype. I don't know these projects, because I know that they're not going to make it, but, you know, sure, why not? As always, I, I, I will announce this. Um, please make sure that the coins in your portfolio... Uh, reflect reality and simply not hype. If you've seen a pattern in the last four to five years <clears throat> of the coins that are being accumulated by the richest people on the planet, it may be time to look at your portfolio and see if you would also like your portfolio to reflect Reality as well. Reality is the only word that I mean. It's just kind of reality. So anyway, 
they got rid of two coins that they probably shouldn't have added to their platform in the first place. I assume many other delistings are also going to be happening because they happen all the time. If you want me to start bringing you these delistings, if Grayscale holding these coins or not holding these coins is very significant news to you, I will bring it to you more often. But this is not the first time that this has happened because a lot of these coins are. And without further ado, let's move on. And to finish things off, in... I want to understand why. Like, just give me, like, an actual reason why this news was so popular. So, it says El Salvador is getting closer to issuing its Bitcoin bonds. The country's finance minister said the government would send Congress around 20 bills to get started with the process. And the president confirmed this on Twitter. El Salvador's minister of finance, Alejandro Zelaya said in a Tuesday interview with the local media that bills would provide legal structure and legal certainty to everyone who buys the Bitcoin bond. The idea is that the $1 billion in bonds will be issued this year with half converted to Bitcoin and the other half used for infrastructure and BTC mining. The government hopes that the issuance will help build a Bitcoin city, a tax-free enclave for Bitcoin advocates. There's a lot of Bitcoin in, in, in this one paragraph. Uh, in the east of the country, powered by geothermal energy from nearby volcanoes. We just, if I'm not mistaken, it must have been yesterday, you just spoke about El Salvador and 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 Bitcoin no more than 24 hours ago. Um, basically being that they planned on, that they, they were going forward with their geothermal energy thing. Uh, the president said that he, wink, uh, expects two more countries to accept Bitcoin as legal tender this year. What were the other things? And something else was going to be happening, but I'm pretty sure that the Bitcoin bonds was definitely already a part of it. Why this news is causing everyone to go completely insane, I'm not really sure. Here's the other, I guess, other part of it that only some websites are actually talking about. Allegedly, allegedly, uh, they're, they're planning on issuing these volcano bonds, which I mean, just sounds epic, but you know, logic. Um, apparently is going to be used to pay down $800 million of, of, of debt that they apparently also have that matures in 2023. Like I said, very few places are actually talking about the, the debt issue. Um, however, the issuance of bonds, Bitcoin bonds by this country, usually we get, you know, I mean, most popular news story of the day. It's usually something that even shouldn't be popular news story of the day. But for some reason, this one took the cake. This was on every single website that I could find in the cryptocurrency space. I mean, I get why it's... Uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, rev not revolutionary. Uh, amazing or uh, historical. Historical is the word I'm looking for. But every website... I mean, the idea that they've already made it legal tender would tell me that as it's legal tender in the country, they would simply be logically moving forward with other things like bonds denominated in Bitcoin as it's legal tender in their country. Why everyone keeps going crazy? There was news, remember? What was it? Like two weeks ago. There was news that El Salvador, I think, purchased 21 Bitcoin, and that was also the most popular news story of the day. I think even that day or the day before, I think we found out that uh, MicroStrategy holds, I think, 118,000 Bitcoin. You know, I, I'm, I'm not really getting it. Like, I understand the optimism, of course, behind a country like legally having Bitcoin as legal tender. But the weight seems to be a little bit, you know, undistributed. Um, if this year uh, we do al allegedly, apparently, so saith the president, uh, have two other countries who are going to be uh, using Bitcoin as legal tender within their space, I hope they also get as much screen time because this was really intense. Like everywhere I looked, it was like, Okay, yeah. Oh, 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 wow, more bonds. Oh, oh, even more. Oh, wow. Okay, well, you know, so I assume this is going to pass. And I assume they're going to have Bitcoin bonds. And then the news will also go even crazier when these are actually there. So 
Anyway, that's the sure why not news. What what am I missing about the world? All right, let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Professor Wally from Gunbite University, Jamie Saad, Blockchain Simplified, and let's move on. Chris, Hakeem Wilkins, Empire Queen, Stake It With Valor, Fud, Weiser, Mortified, Roman, Geba, Bitcoin, Ben Arachno, Dave, Tony, Ambrosky, The Dealers, Den, Red, Plump, Tomato, Umnu, Wish Nikki, the letter M, not brain, Captain something in the Z-Way, Lay Crypto, Black Sheep, AJ Cut 5, Speedy 655, five, and Carlos was like Mobarazzi, JoJo, Shaw Show, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolay, Lauren, just have a quarter bitty, Bare Bones, Mining, Troy, all good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pater Noster, Conan, Don't Skip Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolik Banana, Auspicious Agile, and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Utopia 569, Moonman, Hi Zerp, Martin Steuer, Nostromo, John Sarson, the Anima Reader, at Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Mohamaroni, Mass Adventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Damien, Setsuna, Richie Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Pax Sisnik, Manji Alavori, Jim Garner, Jimmy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller His Chest Every Day, and Kyle Skip Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Bodie McBoatface, Anytime Fitness, Monks Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger and Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Stos, stos, stos. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. Thank you to everyone who is a Patreon member. Thank you to everyone who left a like, a comment, has subscribed, or is still here listening to me ramble on about this market. If you're still here, type in the word Bitcoin three times in the comment section to let me know that you're still watching. At the moment... Bitcoin is currently at $46,624. It is up by 0.18% every single day. See this really, whoop, see that little spike right there? It happens every single day, and then there's always a slam down right after. Seems a little coordinated. I don't know. It happens every single day. Ethereum is up by 1%. It is at 3,824 US dollars. Cardano is up by 1.4%. Some other crazy stuff down here. There we go. Chainlink is up by 8 Unicorns are up by 2, Algorand is up by 1, Cosmos is up by 2.99, Phantom is up by 8%, Lumens is up by 3.5%, no Lumens news, but alas, there we are, Internet Computer is up by nearly 22%, I want to understand why, FTX, FTT token is up by 5.78%, VeChain Thor is up by 3, Filecoin is up by 6%, Compound Ether, because that's a thing now, is up by 1.2%. Elron E-Gold is up by 5% as well. Helium is up by 10%. Tezos is up by 5 Theta is up by 7 Clay is up by 7 And IOTA is still in the top 50. I'm not sure how they're doing it. I'm mentally not sure how they're... $66 million, that's it, of trading volume. For comparison, Tezos has a billion. How they're still in the running... I don't get it, but kudos to them for, I mean, hanging on by a dental floss. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, and supporting, and I will most certainly be talking. To you all soon. See.